It was the year President Obama first was elected to the White House that four business school buddies were cooking up an idea that would change an industry. We've all at some point had that brilliant idea that was going to change the world and make us millions, but very few of us get past the dream stage. The guys who started the game-changing eyewear company, Warby Parker, started with a simple question. Why do eyeglasses cost so much? The answer took them from a classroom study group to a billion dollar company. I remember vividly, we were in the computer lab and Jeff and I were talking, uh, Andy and Dave came up and said, hey, like, why are glasses so expensive? Or you worked at a nonprofit that distributed eyeglasses in the developing world. And uh, I sort of paused and said, there's really no reason. Neil Blumenthal, Dave Gilboa, Jeff Rader, and Andy Hunt were classmates at the Wharton School of Business in 2008 when they asked their question. The story goes, Dave, that you left a pair of glasses in a seat back on an airplane. I'd spent a few months traveling before business school and left a $700 pair of glasses on an airplane and I just bought uh, a new iPhone. I, I paid $200 for that and it did all these magical things that um, I couldn't have contemplated were possible even a few years earlier. Meanwhile, the technology behind a pair of glasses is 800 years old. Your first mistake, of course, was owning a $700 That's pair right. of glasses, <laughs> right? I think that was the lesson you should, right. should take away from that one. Yeah, exactly. It serves them right. We had this personal pain point and we built Warby Parker to solve that for ourselves and then lots of other people. Blumenthal knew there was a better way because of his experience working for Vision Spring, a nonprofit that provides glasses to the poor in developing countries. We were producing glasses for people living less than four dollars a day and literally 10 feet away on the same production lines where some of the sort of most famous names in fashion were being produced. What's the typical markup on a pair of glasses? 10 to 12 times from what they're being manufactured for. So just the markups in this industry are, are crazy. One company, Luxottica, dominates the industry as the world's largest designer, manufacturer, distributor, and retailer of eyeglasses. Most consumers don't realize that uh, most eyewear brands that they've heard of, including major fashion labels like Chanel, Prada, Dolce Gabbana, are, are manufactured by the same company. So from a booth at nearby Roosevelt's Pub, the four classmates plotted a shakeup of the entire glass industry, and Warby Parker was born. What were some of the early reactions you guys got to the idea? Yeah, so I think lots of people were like, oh, cool project, guys. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on this entrepreneurial journey, it's a roller coaster. You have days where you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then you have days where, like, we are the dumbest people on the planet. <laughs> Introducing Warby Parker. Just $95 per pair in stylish styles, both handsome and pretty. They chose the name Warby Parker by combining two characters in Jack Kerouac's novel, The Dharma Bums. And for every pair of the $95 glasses a customer buys from Warby Parker, another pair is donated to someone in need. Do you guys think you could make more money if you weren't giving away half your glasses, or is it because you give away half your glasses that the business is doing well? We think we certainly maximize short-term profits, but we think we'd be making a, a mistake. Uh, we really view it as a, a great long-term investment. Before Warby Parker had 20 sleek retail stores with 20 more planned this year, the guys sold their glasses exclusively online, working out of Neil's Philadelphia apartment. Feedback that we kept receiving from people is, how am I gonna buy glasses online? I wanna touch and feel them, I wanna try them on. What if we just sent people frames to try on at home? That gets over this fit issue. They'll touch the frames, they'll look in the mirror, and they'll be like, this is great. So this idea of a home try-on really came from a moment of, of self-doubt, and that gave us the confidence to keep moving forward. Everything changed one day in February of 2010, when GQ posted an article calling Warby Parker the Netflix of eyewear. As soon as the GQ article hits, I remember all of us are, are over in Neil's apartment, and we have a mobile app that's showing us the orders as they come in. It just kept going faster and faster and faster, and you know, there's a limited supply. We had uh, a wait list of 20,000 customers. Wow. Um, we were out of inventory for about nine months. Um, and it's a good problem to have, but we were all terrified that um, we had all these early adopters that were really excited about our brand, and we were leaving them with a disappointing early experience. So they reached out to those customers personally. 
every last one of them. We need to take Jeff off the phones because he would just give everybody free pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> just dishing them out. Yeah, we're really sorry. Here's a pair of glasses on us. I was like, we don't have any more glasses to give away. We're sold out. We'd be sitting in a lecture, all of us typing, and you know, with a professor giving a lecture, and we're answering customer service emails. Like, so when's the breakthrough moment then, where you say? We're, we're done with the bootstraps. This is not a mom and pop shop anymore. I mean, the company shot off like a rocket ship. We hit our first year sales targets in three weeks, sold out of our top 15 styles in, in four weeks. Um, it, it, it was mayhem. Last year, Fast Company Magazine named Warby Parker the most innovative company in the world over the likes of Apple, Google, and Alibaba. And just five years after it was born, Warby was valued at well over $1 billion. The bigger we get and each one of those milestones that we hit, we realize that there's um, such a big opportunity in front of us and we're just motivated to continue to grow and, and have more impact over time. One of our very first frames, the Roosevelt's, were named after um, that first bar that, so we made the decision to start the business. Do you ever stop and say, wow, I can't believe we pulled this off? A couple of years ago, we uh, announced that we had distributed a million pairs of glasses to people in need throughout Buy a Pair, Give a Pair program. And, um, and just thinking about the scale that we had achieved in, in such a short time period forced us to take a step back and, and, um, and realize that you know, we, we've accomplished a lot in a pretty short period of time. Uh, people often ask us, well, aren't you afraid of, of the big optical companies? It's like, no, we're actually more afraid of four guys just like us, <laughs> yeah. you know, sitting in a dorm room somewhere, thinking up a, a better way to provide glasses to people. Um, show of hands, who actually needs the glasses they're wearing today? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I hate this question. <laughs> 50 percent, huh? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just walking billboards, is that right? That's right. Fashion yeah. accessories. Yeah. Yes. Advertise. Sorry guys, had to ask. Neil and Dave run the company while Andy has moved on to venture capital and Jeff has undertaken his next act of disruption with the company Harry's, which aims to do to the shaving industry what Warby Parker has done to eyewear. And if you've dreamed of creating your own billion dollar business and want to get Neil's thoughts on how to do it, check out our web extra at today.com. Hello Today fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.